While J.P. Morgan is attracting attention with the testimony of its CEO on Capitol Hill, the country's biggest bank is also being featured in a new book about the country's biggest bank failure. It's called The Lost Bank, the story of Washington Mutual, the biggest bank failure in American history. Joining us this morning is the book's author, Kirsten Grind. Kirsten, good morning to you. Good morning. You spent a lot of time reporting on this. In fact, from beginning to end, what's so compelling about this topic that makes it worthy of a book? Well, there is so much that's compelling about this. I mean, first of all, it was the biggest bank failure in American history. It was the country's largest savings and loan bank before it collapsed. And its trajectory is, is tragic. And you can still see some of the problems that it had in the headlines today. So its story, in a nutshell, is that it grew from this very small, sleepy institution into this giant that all of a sudden was making a lot of risky mortgages that weakens, weakened its condition until it collapsed. And, and you got a lot of information. We're talking about Freedom of Information Act requests. You got yes. hundreds of redacted emails. What did you find in those emails? Well, what's really controversial about Washington Mutual's story is the way that it was taken over by the government in the financial crisis of 2008. So the government regulators came in, shut it down, and sold it to J.P. Morgan Chase. Now, Jamie Dimon, who's all over the news today, had long wanted to buy WAMU. So the way that happened, sort of those backroom dealings, was very controversial. So when we requested a lot of documents, all we we got was blacked out emails. And let's take a look at that one more time. When you look at an email like that, mm -hmm. what are we looking at here? What is that? Yeah. Um, it's just an email to the former head of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corp, the FDIC, Sheila Bear, um, to some of her executives, all blacked out. And the subject line is just WAMU. So we know they're talking about WAMU, but we don't know what they're talking about, and there's hundreds of them. Describe this bank for me, and let's go back to, let's say, 1981, and then we move up to the present quite a bit. Was the writing on the wall? Was this going to happen? Absolutely. So, you know, I take the story from 1981, but this is a bank with a long history. It was already 100 years old at that point. It was a small bank. It grew rapidly. It became the country's largest savings and loan. And then in the two, around 2001, one, its CEO decided they were going to become the biggest mortgage lender and they started making risky loans and they became gigantic and that was really its downfall. Is that just the thing though? Because if you go back, it, it has a solid reputation, mm -hmm. great customer service, great right. relationship with the people that use this bank mm -hmm. and then this happened. But that all deteriorated in the end. So it used to be known as the friend of the family, right? This very customer friendly ins institution. Then its campaign transitioned into the power of yes. We will make your loan as quickly as we can to whoever you are. And that, it became detached from its customers. The culture deteriorated and it became this bank that was just completely different from the one it was. So then I ask you to look into your crystal ball and we look at how things are going right now with, with banking and the banking industry being in the news. Does this, will this happen again? Oh, I mean, I, I, I don't know if this specific instance will happen again, but I have not seen anything that could prevent, you know, certain people in these positions from taking risks. I mean, you see this risk taking all over the news today, just like it was four years ago. We had the collapse of MF Global. We have JP Morgan in the news again on that huge trading loss. I mean, they are saying the same things that WAMU executives were saying four years ago. So take me back a little bit, and this is something, you know, you, you look into this and you read a little bit of it, mm -hmm. and this can be a very complicated topic to digest. Absolutely. Are Americans apt uh, or up to speed with what's happening in the banking industry? Should they? I don't think they are, and I think they absolutely should be. Because look, this is your money, right? These are the institutions holding your money, holding your house, your livelihood, right? So one of my big goals with, with this book was to write it in a way, it's a narrative, so it's a story, so people could understand it. Because I think it's crucially important to understand what these people are doing with your money. Kirsten Grind joining us this morning. It really is a fascinating topic and Thank it you. reads just like a thriller. Love the book. Thank Thanks you so much so for much. dropping by. That book, by the way, called The Lost Bank, the story of Washington Mutual, the biggest bank failure in American history.